In this lecture, we are going to create our very first real web server which will be capable of accepting requests and sending back responses. Here I am in the VS Code and I have commented the codes from our previous lecture. Now the first thing which we need to do in order to create a server in Node.js is to import a package called HTTP. So to import a package in Node.js we use this require function. And to this require function we need to pass the name of the package, the name of the module. So here the name of the module is HTTP. And this require function it is going to return an object. So here let's create a variable. Let's again call it HTTP. And to this HTTP, the object returned by this HTTP module will be assigned. Now let's go ahead and let's create our very first server using this HTTP module. So let's scroll down. And in order to build a web server in Node.js, we need to do two things. First, we need to create a server. And second, we need to start the server. Now, to create a server on this HTTP object, we have a method called create server. So this create server method creates a server and to this create server method we can pass a callback function for that I'm using this arrow function syntax and this callback function will be executed every time a new request hits the server and when a new request hits the server this callback function receives two parameters the request so you can call it request or you can name it anything and the response. So these are the two objects which we receive for this callback function whenever a new request hits the server. For now, inside this callback function, let's simply log a message, a new request received. So here we have created a server and this create server method is also going to return the server object. So let's go ahead and let's assign it to a variable. Let's call it maybe server. So step one is complete here. Now we need to start the server. So for that, on this server object, we can call a method called listen. And this listen method starts a new server and it listens to the new requests. Now this listen method takes few parameters and the first parameter is the port number where the application is running. For the port number here let's pass 8000. Then we also need to specify the host. In our case the host is going to be the local host and for the local host the IP address will be 127.0.0.1. And finally, this listen method also takes an optional third parameter, which is a callback function. And this callback function gets executed as soon as the server actually starts listening to the requests. So here inside this callback function, let's simply log a message. Server has started. So here we created our server and we have also started our server. Now let's save these changes in the app.js file. Let's go ahead and let's run this app.js file. So you can see the server has started. And if you notice, the process is still running. It has not stopped. Before, it always stopped right away once it outputted the result. But right now, it doesn't do that. That's because of something called as event loop that we are going to talk about a bit later in this course. But no matter what the technical reasons are for this, it is obvious that the app cannot really exit right away because then we would not be able to receive any request and listen to the requests. So here we have started the server and as long as this server is running, we are able to listen to the new requests. And when this server stops running, after that we will not be able to listen to any requests. And we can stop the server by pressing Ctrl C here in the terminal. But for now, let's keep this server running and let's open web browser. And here, let's type the URL of our application. So it is 127.0.0.1 colon, the port number is 8000. Let's press enter and if I go to the VS code now, you will see that here we see a message, a new request received. Currently, there is only one request which is coming to this server and that's why we see this message only once. Now let me also open another browser, Microsoft Edge. And here also, let me type that URL. So the local IP address which is 127.0.0.1 colon, the port number which we have specified is 8000. If I press enter and if I go to VS code, you will see that now we see this message two times, a new request received two times because currently there are two requests which we are receiving for this server. One request we have sent using the Chrome browser and another request we sent using the Microsoft Edge browser. So keep in mind that every time a new request will come to the server, this callback function will be executed. It will be executed for each new request. Now here, 
instead of logging a message in the terminal here, what we want is whenever a new request comes to the server, we want to send some response. And for now, let's simply send a text response. So for that, we can make use of this response object, which we receive as the parameter for this callback function. And on that, we can use this end method. And from here, we can send a text response. Let's say hello from the server. Let's save the changes here. But before that, we also need to stop the server. So let's stop the server by pressing Control C. And let's save the changes again. And now let's start the server by running this app.js file. So the server has started. Let's go to our Chrome browser. And now you can see we are receiving the response, the response which we are sending from here. And if I go to Microsoft Edge, there also we are receiving the response. So the same response which we are sending from this callback function. All right. Now let's also quickly take a look at this request and response object. So here, let me comment this line, this response.end for now. And here, instead of logging this message, oh, I will keep it here. And I want to log the request object. Let me stop the server again. Let's save the changes here. And let's restart the server by running this app.js file. If I go to the browser and if I reload the page, a new request will be sent. And here we will receive a new request. And that request will be stored inside this request object, this request parameter. And we are logging that request parameter. So here you can see that request parameter has been logged. And this request parameter, it is actually storing a request object. And this request object has some properties and methods. All right, now let's also log this response object here. Before that, here you can see the request method is get. So we basically sent a get request. And here the URL is this backslash. So basically we sent a request to the root URL. So all these kinds of information you can get from the request object. In the same way, when we are logging this response object here, from this response object, we can get information related to that response. So here, let me first go ahead and let me stop the server by pressing Control C. Let's also clear the console by typing this command CLS. And now let's save the changes here. And let's go ahead and let's run this app.js file. So server has started. Let's go ahead and let's make a new request. And here you can see that now the response object is logged. And this response object also has some properties and methods which gives us the information about the request. All right, let's comment this console.log statement. Let's uncomment this response.int statement. So basically using this response.int, we are able to send a response to the client. Now here, let me go ahead and let me stop the server again. So for that, I can type control C. And now if I try to access this web page, so here, if I try to access this application, you see I'm not able to access it because now we have stopped the server. We would be able to access the server. We would be able to send requests to the server and receive response only as long as the server is running. Currently, the server is not running. We have stopped the server. In order to run this server, we need to run this app.js file. And here you can see the server has started and the process is still running because if the process would not have been running, we would have seen this path instead of this cursor here. Okay. And since the server is running now, I'm able to send a request and receive the response from the server. So in this lecture, we learned how to create a server in Node.js. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.